Returning once more to the development of plus-minus rating model for football players. This video again looks at how to make the model correctly capture that different leagues may have different distributions of playing talent. This time we look at what might be the best modeling technique tested so far. Hello, welcome to Football Player Ratings. I am Lars Magnus, and on this channel I present and discuss the use of historical match data and mathematical models to rank and evaluate football players. Let's start by looking at the best model we have found so far. It is based on the idea that a football match is divided into segments, such that in each segment there are no substitutions of players and no players sent off. For each segment, we then try to explain the observed goal difference, scaled for the duration of the segment, by assigning ratings to each player, and by considering other factors that influence the result of a match, such as the home field advantage and players being given red cards. The rating of each player consists of an individual player component, but also components that depend on the age of the player at the time of playing a match, to capture the effect that young players are still improving and that older players may be on the decline. Recently we have discussed that adding league components to the ratings of each player can also improve the ratings, as it more easily allows to estimate the difference in quality between leagues. At first we only considered the current league for each player. This led to jumps in the ratings of players when moving from one league to another. Adding components for all the leagues in which a player has appeared smoothed out some of these jumps. However, could there still be better ways of compensating for the difference in playing strength between leagues? One idea was to use team components instead of league components. That is, since in a given league we could have a significant difference in strength between teams, it could make sense to use teams in the same way that we have used leagues. However, one, this would still give jumps in the ratings of players when moving from one team to another. Two, some teams vary a lot in strength over time, so it would not be a perfect solution to assume that these teams have a constant strength over time. Three, I made an observation of a team in a lower league that had a really good season, which resulted in the players on that team receiving very high ratings compared to the players in the division above. For these reasons, I will not go into the use of team variables in this video. The final idea that we will focus on in this video is a slight departure from the basic Tikhonov regularization that we have relied on when estimating player ratings so far. I plan to provide the details of this new modeling approach in a later video. For now, let's focus on the main idea. We are basically going to drop the league components, so that the rating of a player again can be expressed as a sum of the individual player component and the age adjustments. Then, instead of using regularization to pull each player's rating towards zero, we include separate expressions in the model that says that the rating of a player should be pulled towards the ratings of a set of similar players. In the following, this set of similar players is taken as the most common teammates of a player and the ratings are adjusted for the age of the players involved. This means that unless we have observations to support a different conclusion, the rating of a player will be similar to the average rating of the players with which the player has spent the most time on the pitch. So, how well does this work? We start by examining this from the perspective of our evaluation framework. The good news is that the idea of pushing the ratings of players towards the ratings of their most common teammates seems to produce better ratings. The second good news is that we can get even better ratings by compensating for the duration of segments by adjusting the left-hand side coefficients instead of the right-hand side coefficient. Now, at this point, I'm not really aware of any remaining gigantic flaws in the rating model. This means I would like to have your help to identify any further weaknesses of the model. To do this, upcoming videos will focus on presenting various results from the rating model. As a warm-up, we may revisit Burnley's Samuel Michael Vokes, who we considered in the previous video. This is his rating graph based on using league components. It has certain kinks in it, as well as a lot of noise in the beginning of the dataset. Compare with the rating graph when using a regularization based on common teammates. This graph looks smoother, but also shows that the new model places him around rank 500 in this dataset, compared to rank 100 in the previous model. Which is more correct? The evaluation framework leads us to believe that 
placing him around rank 500 is closer to the truth than placing him around rank 100. Looking at the top 10 players in the training dataset according to the model using league components, we have a fair collection of decent footballers. When using teammates to anchor the player ratings, the list does change a bit. While there are still some excellent players on the list, perhaps some will react to the fact that Ronaldo is now at number 10 instead of at number 3. Hopefully, when publishing more results from the current rating model, I will get some feedback that allows us to further improve our models. Besides, I still have a list of minor improvements to the model that should be implemented at some point, as well as a list of more experimental changes that I would like to try out. So, whether you are interested in finally seeing some more rating analysis, or whether you are interested in seeing more details of the mathematical models involved in the analysis, I hope to see you in upcoming videos on this channel. Stay tuned!